Yum. You're listening to a Shockcast original. Shock. The C Word with Kalista. Hey, it's me, Kalista, and this is a brand new episode of The C Word, talking to your favorite content creators, and hopefully they will be able to let us in on how they became so successful. This is actually the last episode for season one, so you know we had to make it a little bit special, and you might have heard today's guest on the radio. She's got a brand new song called Passcode. Um, it's making waves. She's got millions of followers on every single platform except one, which I want to ask her about, but First, welcome to the C Word, Janine Weigel. Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> How have things been for you in 2020? Oh my gosh, I think it's been quite a, um, <laughs> let me just say, um, use the word challenging year. What do you think about social media and the whole quarantine situation? Do you think it made it better or maybe a little worse because it's kind of a polarizing subject I feel. Yeah I agree. I feel like for me personally it has helped me a lot because once I uh, moved to Malaysia I had to immediately go into lockdown for three months and it was really hard for me because I never lived on my own before and the fact that I couldn't even go outside and meet people was super difficult for me. So social media and just having the internet in general really helped me to at least keep a little bit sane because I felt like at least I could stay connected with the people back at home in some type of way. (laughs) So you're a singer in your own right, but you also focus a lot on your social media. So do you think it's an important part of your career? And how do you juggle so many different things and in different languages as well? Because I know you upload in English, in Thai. I've seen yeah. a couple of videos in German, I think. Or was yeah, that- like yeah. songs and stuff. Yeah. Um, I think for me, social media, like for me in my field, social media is pretty important because that's the main way I can connect with my fans. And also uploading stuff in multiple languages is to kind of like also connect with fans on a more personal level like for example if I do vlogs in Thai uh, it's my intention to um, directly address my Thai fans but of course I also do subtitles so my international fans will understand it as well so they won't feel excluded and yeah that 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 different type of stuff but I feel like Social media has really helped me to stay more connected with my fans and all. Would you say doing that gave you, like when you you suddenly started uh, posting Thai content, did it give you a a sudden boost? Okay, with my YouTube channel, the funny thing is the first video that went viral didn't actually go viral in Thailand, but it went viral in Vietnam, (laughs) which I, like, it's very random. (laughs) (laughs) I still don't know why or how it happened, but um, my first fan base was international. And uh, in between, like, it took like around six months until I got my first viral video. But in between, I did cover like a couple Thai songs, but um, it did get some like Thai subscribers and Thai viewers, but it wasn't, it wasn't to the point where like, oh, there was something going viral in Thai. But I think when the song that went viral in Vietnam actually went viral, uh, people in Thailand started to kind of realize like, oh, she's not a foreigner. She's a Thai person as well. So that's kind of like what made them follow me as well, I would say. But um, yeah, I guess it was like kind of like a weird coincidence that coincident that it happened this way. <laughs> what would you say um, is the most basic equipment that you would recommend, uh, say, like an aspiring singer who wants to start on social media to have? I think um, if it would be with covers, I would say just get a microphone, uh, get a sound card and have some type of program like GarageBand or like anything that you can record music with uh, or like a program or something. I think those are like the three main things that you need. And then you can basically just upload covers at like a decent quality. (laughs) Of course, there's still like um, the steps of mixing and all that, but if you can find somebody or if you try to learn how to mix uh, music yourself, I think that would also help. I think 
just starting somewhere is already a good start. <laughs> of course, you also、um, started and you still post vlogs.、Uh, you still do YouTube challenges. I saw you、uh, recently uploaded a gameplay. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Why did you decide to do all these other things that have、um, nothing to do with music?、Um, it's something that I actually used to do、uh, later on, like a couple of years ago, and I just wanted to connect with my fans more and just have them see me in, I guess, like a different environment apart from just like singing. Well, speaking of those fans, you've actually got 1.7 million followers on Instagram.、Um, how do you actually keep them engaged on days that、uh, maybe aren't so interesting? Do you ever like feel the pressure to just go out and take photos purely for the gram, or、um, like I would like to do that sometimes, but because my my house is so far from all the interesting things that are going on, <laughs> I just don't really get to do that. <laughs> How many times have you changed、um, a feed look? You know what I mean.、Oh、<laughs> if like if you scroll like if you scroll back on my Instagram feed, there is like it's so random. Like at some point, I had only like kind of like a purple aesthetic. Then it's all like dark, and then so pastel, and then it's like grunge again. Like I don't even know what aesthetic my feed is right now. <laughs> It's so hard to find the perfect aesthetic. <laughs> you know, when they do it, it doesn't look so hard. But then when you try and do it, it's like. <laughs> okay, it's it's nice to know that everybody、um, seems to go through the same thing when it comes to Instagram. <laughs> okay, bring Instagram back to music, right? Have you ever tried to slide into the DMs of artists that you'd like to work with, and has it worked? If you have, I guess I wouldn't say like. Directly slide into the DMs, but like kind of like you know like singers or producers that I wanted to work with. Like I think it helps when you actually show support. I feel like for me at least, like if somebody just kind of like sent me a DM, but like I didn't really see that they supported me. Like I wouldn't really like I wouldn't know how I would feel. The most important part is to show that you're genuine and just. Not just want to like connect because like this other person is famous or whatever you know, because、mm-hmm. I think it's very easy to discern if that person wants something from you just because you're famous or because they actually really like you as a person or as an artist. You know, like actually like giving to other people. The more you give to other people, the more you will also receive. Like it's not just like a one way street. It's just like something that's so human. At the end of the day, it's gonna it's gonna make you successful or get you to the point where you want to be. Be because when people feel like they can connect to you, I actually love that. Like I I feel like that's something that、um, this this podcast has never actually covered before. Like the human connection, the human side of of all this digital content and 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 just constantly looking at a screen. What is it that makes it? Part of a, 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 your normal life, you know what I mean. We, we're not just、yeah. sitting there scrolling through photos every day, watching like random videos. Like it is about staying in touch with people that you know, people that you love, or meeting new people. Okay, moving on from Instagram.、Um, so I mentioned that there's one platform that doesn't seem to add up with all of your numbers. Since we're talking about numbers,、um, and that is Twitter. Yes. <laughs> So, what is the story behind that? Because when I was looking at all your social media platforms, I noticed on Twitter you only joined September of this year. Um, I actually had a a Twitter、um, account beforehand, but I deleted it because, like, okay, there's a backstory. <laughs> I never was really a big Twitter fan, but I did sign up anyway. Like, I thought maybe that was would be an easier way to connect with fans and just like you know post random stuff. I would say. But I felt like for me the Twitter community was quite toxic for me.、Um, I I had a time where I think it was like I don't know six years ago, like 2014, 15 or 16.、Um, I covered a K-pop song and I just like did it for fun and it it was an acapella version, which was the first time I did acapella, and people were kind of like just kind of slamming me and. Like either making fun of me or like kind of like being very protective of their artists, and they thought kind of like there were a lot of comments where like they they thought I would 
steal their artists in a way which for me didn't make sense because like I'm just mm -hmm. another YouTuber out of the bunch of YouTubers like why do you think that <laughs> you know so yeah. uh, at some point I uh, because like I saw all the tweets I I did reply to like one or two of them but more like in a like not sarcastic but more in a funny way like kind of like brushing it off and uh, there was a fan who tweeted at me like oh you know like stay strong and I said something along those lines where it's I think it's quite hard to translate in English but kind of like not not based, not, not like directly uh, slap but like I said something like uh, oh you know it's okay I'll just like uh, Oh, kind of like throw my new song at them to prove them wrong, kind of like that, mm -hmm. you know? And that was something that really like added fuel to the hate. So like I, during that time I trended number one on Twitter and I was like, whoa, I didn't even do anything bad, you know? Oh my gosh. <laughs> like what I said wasn't even offensive. It was just kind of like in a funny way. Mm -hmm. But I guess like whatever you say when people hate you, they just try to like just exaggerate on that. So that was a time. But um, I think what was the, the peak moment of that whole thing was right, like I think a week or two after that happened while I was still trending, I actually won an award for my singing. So I was like, boom. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all say, like, there were, like, there was one comment where, it, like, that was kind of, like, the headline of all the news was, like, oh, she sings, like, a like a cow or something like that. So, like, that was, like, a slap in the face. I got an award for singing. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's actually a question I've asked everybody who's been on this podcast. Like, how do you deal with hate online? And I found that everybody went through the same process. So everybody started being really upset. And then mm. you start trying to fight it. <laughs> and then yeah. you start, you know, like questioning yourself. Is that really true? Like, am, am I ugly? Am I fat? Yeah. Do I not know how to sing, you know? But yeah. I think everybody comes out of it with the same um, thought process, which is you just got to ignore it because it's going to happen. Like, it's a, unfortunately, it's such a norm nowadays to like ha receive hate online. As soon as you get like the slightest bit of hype, you're going to get a barrage of like hate comments trying to yeah. bring you down. And it's just, like I said, unfortunately, it's, it's just, it just happens every single time. Yeah. yeah me, and I, 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 I feel it's really bad because like for, for, for like you, like you're an artist and everything and you use social media to connect with your fans. But um, when you read, say for instance, Billie Eilish, um, Selena Gomez, even Benny, who is like quite new on the scene, they all had to stop reading their comments because of all the negativity. And that takes away from the real fans because now they can't connect. Yeah, exactly. For me, I think what I've realized that um, with comments like you, like you can't sing or I don't like your voice or you like, uh, your voice sounds horrible. Or like, just like looking down on my dreams, like saying something like, oh, you'll ne never get to where you want to be because of this and that. I've realized that these I don't need to care about these people because these people don't love me and they don't support me. So why do I need to care about them when there are so many other people who care about me and want to actually see me do good? Like, I feel like for me now, I just want to focus on those people more because they actually mean well for me. And these other people can just say whatever they want, but I don't care because like, you can't stop me unless I stop myself, you know? Yeah, and I think you can't be stuck unless you let those comments affect mm -hmm. you and actually stop your actions and what you're doing. Yeah, I think you you know everybody's got a finite amount of energy, right? So, yeah. do you want to put a hundred percent of your energy into people like giving back to people who support you and love you, or do you want to like divide that energy into like okay, I'll give these people fifty percent, but now I have to spend fifty percent like um being upset or answering like to like hate and stuff like that like there's, there's really no point right yeah exactly yeah totally <laughs> yeah it, it's that is definitely I, I feel like the the downside of social media and I just wish that you know social media is no longer a new thing I, I wish that people would just stop like one of the trends 
that is happening on on TikTok that I see a lot is like people will just post, you know, that rainbow light thing that that. Yeah. Like that. So I've noticed like there's this thing where they they'll just post themselves and then the the neon light flashing. Then they'll put that. Oh, am I the only one who thinks this person is ugly? Am I the only one who thinks this person doesn't like who doesn't get the hype on this person? And it's like why why are you putting out videos like you you actually thought about it sat down said something negative about somebody that you don't even know and published it and the sad thing is yeah. those videos go viral yeah or even not just like talking about other people but just like self-deprecating jokes in a way where like mm. with things that you cannot change like for example i don't know like uh body image or whatever like i feel like i kind of I, like i don't know but i feel right now i feel kind of bad for it the kids that are growing up with social media because back in my day like everything was kind of more uh the content was more filtered in, in a way where like you would like when I was younger I would only watch tv and maybe like I still had youtube but I would only go on youtube for like I don't know like watching or listening to Miley Cyrus or something like that you know <laughs> like that wasn't tiktok or anything or anything that was toxic like mm. there is now right now everybody can just upload whatever they want and it's not as filtered as it is anymore and i think that will actually affect a lot of young people and how they're growing up like i'm not sure like how the outcome is going to be but i think it does it 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 i i, I believe that it will have some type of negative effect of the, the kids or the teens that are growing up right now, which, like, I feel kind of bad for, you know? Mm-hmm. I find this kind of interesting, actually, like, now that you put it that way, like, with everything that goes on online, with mm-hmm. all the negativity and everything, you would have thought this, um, they would have, like, a thicker skin because it's, like, a constant negativity, right? Like, you, you just get used to it from a very young age. But I feel like the opposite is actually true. Like with all the negativity that that that's happening, it's actually making um, making them more offended or more upset, I guess. Which yeah. is it's, it's kind of a, a strange situation, I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't really know like how <laughs> how how life works, but like what 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 I've noticed in a lot of times that the people who are actually like not easily offended or people who are just like really chill are the people who grew up with a lot of like positive things like that's kind of like what made them be who they are now Mm. and like like I I guess like just being surrounded by the things that help you grow and like kind of help you strengthen just the relationship with the people around you or even the relationship within yourself yourself helps you kind of discern like okay what's worth fighting for what's worth actually being like sensitive for and what's just kind of like up to the person and their opinion I would say Mm -hmm. yeah because like (laughs) what I've noticed in the internet is that like a lot of people are just ready to fight about anything whether it be big or small (laughs) but the things that are actually worth fighting for sometimes people are just stay quiet you know Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah I totally get you yeah, it's a, it's a very strange situation. And I think um, in 2020, with us all being inside and using social media a lot more than usual, I don't know, I guess maybe we'll see things come to a head. Like, yeah. maybe something will change out of all of this when we're finally, like, over and done with this whole situation. Maybe the way we see social media will be different or the, may- the way we use it will be different. But who knows, right? We, we, we really don't know. And social media changes so fast. Yeah, exactly. But I feel like that are a lot of people who are aware of the I guess the effects of social media and they are also figuring out how to use social media as a tool to actually make the world a better place and the people around them as well so I think like although there will be people that are going to be neg- negatively affected by that I think it's not like completely the devil you know I think there are people who can like who know how to make a make good use out of it so i still have like hope for that (laughs) well speaking of that um we were talking about tiktok so do you think like creating tiktok dances to songs is gonna become the new marketing strategy because tiktok seems to have become very much of the you know the new social media and uh, the new 
marketing tool, you know. Honestly, I have to say, I feel like an old person when it comes to TikTok because I'm not really on TikTok that much. I'm only on like Instagram and maybe Facebook from time to time, but mainly Instagram. So like sometimes when I go on TikTok, I'm like, what is this? How do you do this? You know? <laughs> I think, I think right now, because also a lot of younger people are on TikTok and young people, they're like, in a sense, they're quite easily influenced. So like, if they really like something, they, they push it a lot more than actual adults that, at least from what I've seen, like when you see at all these TikTok stars, like, I don't know, I can't think of anybody right now, but, uh, all, like most their main audience is young fans fans who are impressionable and I think that's the thing that like I guess the music industry are also kind of targets because that's kind of the easiest target to them to sell their music to I would say mm -hmm. that's what I, I like kind of like uh, observed at least do you, do you see it becoming a trend? Like if you re release new music, do you see, um, I don't know, your label creating a dance to your song and, and hoping like it gets picked up? Or do you think that's just like a supplement to the actual marketing of the song? I think for me, like personally, I think you can't really rely on just one thing, but you have to like uh, put your music or your content out in on multiple platforms and um, multiple ways um, but I think like for other artists that like that has definitely helped like say uh, let's say like Doja Cat say so like that song just blew up because of TikTok so I think it's also that the timing of like of your life and like the time you put your content out as well I think that's also important but yeah I think I think for me, at least, like, I believe in timing that, like, if it's the right time, it'll just happen. Like, you don't have to try so hard, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But also, it's important to, like, also do your best in pushing out your content as well. Not just, like, just putting out and just, like, waiting to see what happens. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Everything, like it or not, needs effort, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, and before I let you go, I just want to know, we've talked about so many different things, but when we bring it all back to the most basic of the basic, what is your advice for aspiring singers and or YouTubers in 2021? I think the advice I would give is that if you know what you want to do and if you love what you're doing right now and you want to take it to the next step, just just do it and like criticism like constructive criticism is good because you know where your blind spots are but you also have to kind of like discern okay what's unhealthy for me to pick up and you know if if there are people who are like seem like they're not supporting you or if they're just criticizing you because they they don't like they just want to put you down just you know you don't you don't have to pay attention to that and just like just know that these people don't actually mean well to you and that's not something that you put you need to put your energy into and there's always more room to improve i think as humans there is no like no point where it's like okay like this is the end there's always more room to improve and you know if if you think of doing something just do it and see where it goes because for me when i started my youtube channel i had no idea how to do it and I didn't really have like that much of money to invest in as well, but I just tried to do something with what I had. And I think at the end of the day, if you keep consistency, you'll see something come out of it more or less. You just have to keep doing it. And just most important thing is that you have to love it, love what you do. Okay. Thank you so much, Janine, for talking to me. Thank you for having me. It was really fun. <laughs> yeah, and I'm hoping, I think all of us are hoping, fingers crossed, uh, we're going to have a happy 2021. <laughs> yeah, please, please. Uh, I, hope it, I hope we can all start traveling again soon once this gets better. I hope this gets better very, very soon. And then we can see you back here in Malaysia, even though you yeah. spent most of the year here. <laughs> 
Oh, exactly. Right. <laughs> okay, and I will see you all in season two, which will be out end of January should be. So stay tuned for that. The C Word with Callista.